So this is the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Switch. Now, this opening cutscene, man, when this game was first announced, everyone was so excited because this opening cutscene is kind of animated in such a way, but then they saw the actual game graphics and they're all disappointed, some people. Anyway, the actual game graphics look more like, uh, like this. Let's go ahead and just jump into this. So this is a story about Link. He gets stranded on this island, and he has to find a way off. That's pretty much the basis of the whole story. And that's why it makes a good um, side game, because it's a, a you're stranded on this island in between adventures, and you just have to find your way out. Now, as you can see here, these are what the in-game graphics look like, and they're very different from that opening animation that you see. In fact, um, I guess there is an op that animation style is used in both the, the opening of the game and at the ending of the game. And what you get in this game is pretty um, normal. I guess I want to go over more of the differences between this and the Game Boy version. But let's get over the, uh, the game basics first. You have your a uh, sword attack, which you have for the B button. A is like an interact button for looking at stuff. And then L and R, well, R is your shield. After you get the boots, then those become your L button as you hold it. And that's L1 or L2, same thing. Then you also get these other items throughout the dungeons. I just fell in a hole. So, Throughout the game, you get these various items, and this game adds bottles to your inventory, which allow you to only carry fairies. So that, in addition to the medicine you can find in the game, there are plenty of opportunities to extend your life bar beyond the already huge amount of hearts that you can get since they've added heart pieces to this game. So this game is very, very easy once you get past the opening area and get some hearts. By collecting a certain number of seashells and you take those to the spot where you can get rewards for those, there you can get a seashell detector. So it'll actually send off a tune that'll let you know when a secret seashell is in the area. Other than that, you have no options, just a save and load uh, ability. And then you got your map, which um, you can hide the markers on it to see the whole thing. Or, what's fancy is that they let you uh, look at uh, things that's happened, like you can, there's an owl in this game, similar to Ocarina of Time, where he like talks to you in between dungeons to give you hints on stuff. It's nice that you can come in here and you can kind of uh, re-watch or re-listen to what he said, so if you get stuck, you can look at the topmost thing and figure out where you're supposed to be going. You got the heart pieces, secret seashells. And these are new to the Switch version of the game. These are parts of dungeons. So as you go through the game and clear dungeons, you get parts to get added to your collection. As you go through, you can see like uh, you've got the normal enemies to attack. Oh yeah, I am also wearing a red tunic. That's not normal. You start with a green tunic and uh, the different colored, you get a blue tunic or a red tunic through a a secret dungeon, I guess, in the game. And as you can see, going around the world, it's kind of seamless where you just... Oh no, I just... Do I, no, I just not lose my shield. Okay, jeez, that was close. Oh. You can just go around the, the world and there are no like transition screens like there are in the Game Boy game because, you know, it would load up one screen at a time like this would be one screen right here and then I'd go to the edge of the screen and then it would transition to this area right here and you'll notice that I mean if you haven't played the Game Boy version I guess you could notice that the world is kind of built into these square sections in fact if we are to run back over here we can check out the dungeon maker thing which is new to this game 
As far as differences go, I mean the Game Boy game only had A and B buttons, so you would just assign your A and B button up top, and that included your sword and shield if you wanted to use those. So you can never have more than two abilities equipped at once. In this game, you can have your sword, your shield, and any other couple of items you want equipped at one time. Now, because the game itself is very faithful to the original, there aren't really any changes to the dungeons themselves or any other parts of the game. It has been rebalanced a bit, so the boomerang is not as... Um, overpowered as it was in the original Game Boy game. Plus you can get the boomerang and not lose anything else because there were limited inventory slots in the Game Boy game. I don't know if that was a technical limitation why they did that, if you know what I'm talking about on how you get the boomerang, but it's no longer a thing in this game. But there is still a, uh, a I guess, a price to getting the boomerang, and boomerang I still use occasionally, but it does not replace my sword as it kind of does in the Game Boy game. Now what this game is lacking from the Game Boy game is the photo area. So in the original game there's a photo area where you can take, you can find places to take pictures in the original game. That is now replaced with this uh, Dompe's uh, dungeon maker thing. So as you go in here you can arrange dungeons. Now he has some tests for you to do. Basically he wants you to come in here and arrange dungeons in a certain way. If we were to, say, start from scratch, your your job is to do these things. You have to place an entrance, a boss, the nightmare's lair, have enough chests for there to be locked doors, but all you have to do is, is place a, an entrance area, uh, a boss area, and then pick up some some rooms with some, some stairs, and they'll like, connect like that. You can't choose which stairs connect to which stairs, but you can try to manipulate them on how you place them. Basically, it'll automatically connect stairs that are closer together than others. The designation of the chest over here is telling me that I need to place a tile with a chest in it. Otherwise, I'm not passing the test. And then I can put whatever else I want down here. Let's go ahead and put this rupee room in here. And now I can go ahead and start adventuring. If you've played the Game Boy game to death, then you'll notice a lot of the differences in this game. Like, having the A button to check on things now means you have to use the A button to, for stuff like opening doors. In the Game Boy game, you just if you have the key and walk into the door, it'll open the door for you. Now you have to press a button. Just, it's a very small thing, but if you've played the Game Boy game to death, then you'll notice the differences. Now this plays like a very traditional Zelda game. It is nothing like Breath of the Wild, which was the Zelda game to come out before this one. Also, I should explain how the chests work in the Dungeon Maker. In the Dungeon Maker mode itself, the last chest you open will have the boss key in it. So if there's only one chest in the dungeon, it'll have the boss key in it. If there are 10 chests in the dungeon, you have to open all 10 to get the boss key. And that is how they get you to explore the dungeon fully, rather than just going from A to B, you know, just going straight to the boss. Now that is the key to winning some of the later challenges in the game. So now that I have the boss key, I can go ahead and take out a boss. And because I am at the end of the game, I've got the red tunic on, and I have the upgraded sword, I'm going to take this boss out in two hits, as you will now see. This is the first boss of the game, in the first dungeon. You cannot do the dungeons out of order in this game, pretty sure, unless you find some way to glitch through something. I know you could kind of cheat through a, maybe one or two dungeons in the Game Boy game, I'm pretty sure you can't do that in this game. Unless there's something I'm not thinking of. I don't think you can do these dungeons out of order. Completing these four challenges here will give you like a, a heart piece or something. You also get to keep all the rupees you get in this dungeon mode. So filling it with a ton of chests, that can be beneficial to you. Because the shop in this game now has extra tile pieces that you can buy for like over a thousand rupees. 
Also in this game, you can carry at max 9,999 rupees rather than just 999 rupees. So you don't have to worry about maxing out on rupees, like ever. Unless you specifically go for maxing out your rupees. But as you get into the harder ones, uh, you clear all these for, you get like more hard pieces and stuff. I don't remember exactly. You do want to at least clear these three tiers of challenges. It's only like 12 dungeons, I guess, in total, because there's four each. Because those will give you important things like heart pieces. And a heart container, I think. The last one on this list. Going through these ones, these gold shovel level ones, these ones only give you money. These are only if you really want an extra challenge. And I just want to say, going through something like this, this is the largest one they have you make. And the trick to it, this one's also very large. Here's, here's the trick to doing it. You take this design, you have to fill up every space, and it's tricky because you only have so many straight across left ones and so many uh, straight up and down ones. So you have to, of, you, you have to use a lot of end pieces and uh, corner pieces. But here's the thing. It would take forever to go through this whole dungeon. Same thing with this. So these dark areas, these are tiles that are set for you. You can't move them. The light colored ones are all the ones that I placed. But the trick to doing these quickly is, look at this. So this is the completed map. I only had to go straight up to the left, get those chests, and then go to the boss. All of those other tiles that I didn't have to visit, they don't have anything of importance in them. And so if I look at how I arranged it, these are all like mini boss rooms or there's just nothing else in them. They could be a, just a room of stairs or something. Basically, they're all nothing rooms. If you can contain all your treasure chests in one area of the map, then you can get to the boss really quick. And that is key to getting through these. Otherwise, it's just a slog to try to go through the entire dungeon every floor. So that's my advice on completing these. So there are some extra tiles to be found throughout the game in the world. Here's a, a dungeon I made just purely for gaining rupees. You can get 500 rupees each run on this and only takes it takes less than two minutes. So if you need to grind for rupees, I only had to go through it a few times because completing these challenges from Dampe, they give you a bunch of rupees just doing those. So you by no means have to farm for rupees to beat the game or anything. But if you want to get all of the pieces, then you do uh, have to do some farming. You also get some from Amiibo, which I don't have all of them, so I can't get all the dungeon pieces. Not that there's anything really big. But that is it. That is self-contained in its own little hut there. You don't have to do any of it to beat the game. You do want to do those first three tiers of difficulty to get heart pieces, but after that you don't have to do anything. What I do like about this game is that they have added a bunch of convenience, like you have the extra buttons, you have more warp points. So this song with your ocarina, as you can see, there are a handful more warp points to go to, which is convenient. It's not really necessary, but it is convenient. Basically, what I'm really trying to say in my review here is that the original Game Boy game, okay, not the original original Game Boy game, but the DX Game Boy Color version of the game, it is very good. And this game, it adds some convenience, it looks nicer. The music and sound effects are all very muted. The original game has very chunky sounding sound effects, where this game has very understated music. It's got a different feel to it. Really, my final point is that if you've played the Game Boy game to death, there's not much here as far as new content. There's just the Dungeon Maker mode, which is just rearranging parts of dungeons that you've already played before. So if you've never played Link's Awakening before, I suppose this version is the better version to play just because of all the conveniences and, you know, prettier graphics. But the Game Boy version is available on the 3DS for pretty cheap. And that's also very fine. If you've played the game before, I would not consider getting this for $60 at full price. If you can find it cheap someday, I mean I paid slightly less than full price because I got it used, but even that, you can get the Game Boy game for cheap and you get just as much content less the Dungeon Maker. If you have any other questions I can answer, let me know in the comments below. Also if you've played this game, let me know which version you think is better if you've played both, or if not, then let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.